Hello everyone, this is Cypher Deck, and today we're back in EverQuest Project 1999, Permadeath. And we are here with our guild, having our very first meeting, giving out rewards, remembering old stories, and just having fun. Hi guys! Hey! Hi! <laughs> Yo! <Hello. laughs> no time to res. So, we are a permadeath guild, meaning that you start at level 1, and if you die at any point, you delete your character. It's completely gone, no matter what's on it, everything is gone. And uh, you can't hand off your equipment to someone else as you die, or you can't loot things that other people have killed. Just things, bylaws to make sure that everyone is on the same playing field, and... Seems to be uh, doing really well. We have at least 50 to 60 people in the guild as far as our Discord goes, and uh, just is pretty awesome. Yeah, so we have actually grown quite a lot. You know, we started with a small pocket of people. Like, I mean, the first day we got like maybe five or so. It was it was pretty small, but in the last couple of weeks, we've grown to about 60 people. Um, it's the holiday weekend, so I think a lot of people are busy right now and couldn't join the meeting, but uh, we got a nice group here. So we've had some really interesting times. Um, we've had probably a couple hundred deaths so far. Oh, imagine. yeah, yeah. Something like That's that. That's a conservative estimate. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. I think it's I've had 20 fun. myself uh, between my two uh, tunes. But there's nothing like getting up early in the morning and reading the Oh, yeah. You gotta read the obituaries before you read the introductions. <laughs> because then you find out that yep. um, Rindala ended up dying at level 17. And you're like, what? <gasps> How, what? Why are they rolling for a new character? <laughs> Worst so, morning ever. Yeah. yeah. Rindala here. Uh, ha has our guild record for highest level overall yeah. uh, at 17. Uh, Rindala is currently a druid at level 13, but you had your warrior get to 17, and that's that's best so far in guild. It was tough. It was rough getting there, but hey. Damn yeah, Congratulations on that me. level. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We have yet to have someone reach level 20, which is definitely going to be a celebration because that is, that's a hard level to obtain, especially when those first 20 levels are, are wrought with death uh, all around you. I have a feeling that by next monthly, by this next month, we will have several more uh, several people get to level 20. Yeah. I think it's going to happen. I, think, I plan to do it. I think the more that we actually uh, group together and level together, that that is definitely going to end up happening. Especially since we all understand our situations, it makes it a whole lot easier for us to, to, to want to level with each other. We're going to leave our, our group if, if we get to a point where we feel we're becoming uncomfortable. Uh, and go to the zone line. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think... Yeah, um, I've already done that. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely a learning process. Like, as much... As many years as, as you have played EverQuest, as many years as you have been, like, this extremely skilled player, you jump into this, and it's a whole new game. It's it's yeah. very challenging, even to... I mean, I've I've played this game for since it came out. And I've been on P99 for five years now. And you really have to adapt um, to a new way of surviving. Yeah. Uh, it's a really fun challenge. One of the things I really like is that because of the fact that you're starting with a random character in a random location, you get to learn the quests a whole lot more than you probably did um, whenever you made your last tune. If you are if you have a level 40 or 50 on the server, you made your last tune, you probably threw some gear on it and just started leveling. What we're having to do is right. we're having to find any way to gain experience and gain money. 
And so we're going around and having to hail everyone, try to use the old quests that we had, uh, like bone chip quests in any town that you start in. It just really makes the game a little bit more um, heightened because you're you're taking that time. And I I've fallen in love with some of the characters that I've made with their um, with their deities or with the class itself and plan to probably make those in in the future on my main characters or on my main accounts i know yeah, i was very i don't sad ren died so that was very <laughs> bad morning i don't think you realize how much you act die as a noob until it matters yeah i mean i didn't realize it until crispy died for the first time i was like oh and it hurt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't realize how difficult this game is until you've only got one shot. Yeah. I mean, it really, it's until, like, the people that haven't tried it yet, it's a different experience. It's hard to describe. I mean, you, everything in the world from, uh, from a decaying skeleton onto some crag chicks and butcher block to yep. everything. An NPC you're like, you're not sure about. Like one of the scariest things when I first started was seeing the, uh, there's like a wizard or something named Walnin that walks right in front of uh, Kaladim. And I'm like, okay, she's indifferent, but I'm really afraid. I think she's she a mage she, for the mage epic. Is she on, oh, okay. Is she, is she on crag chick faction? Like, I don't know. I'm I'm just afraid that anything's gonna happen <laughs> and she's gonna suddenly kill me and you know, every little it's... thing in the game is terrifying now. Yeah, it's better not to touch crag chicks because you know, then the the kings will kill you and the big ones will get you when you try to move out. So you know, just leave them be. Yeah, you need to consider so many more things like that. It's it it's really intense. It's but I find it exhilarating. It's it's just like lots of adrenaline. Lots yeah. Of adrenaline. Well, the whole reason I started the guild is because um, about four months ago, I created a character named Cinnamanas, uh, which is named after the son of um, the two major mythological uh, mythological uh, beasts, uh, Kronos and um, I forget, Gina, I think is her name. And he is the hundred handed one. So he is unkillable. And so I told Nanal, uh, who is actually in our guild as well, he is uh, Xena, uh, the warrior princess. <laughs> uh, but I told him, that this character is never going to die. Five minutes later, the character dies. So <laughs> I was like, you know, this would actually be a good idea. And that's that's whenever I started um, with with that concept. And I am so happy that the idea grew and people wanted to be a part of it. And here we are now, uh, two weeks in and we have all these people and we have all these stories because of the fact that we've, um, we've, we've all died at least once. Maybe not, um, maybe not memo, <laughs> but we've all died. Most of us. I have, there are two extremes in the guild. Like really like, there's those that go out and just fight. They go out and they take risks. They risk it for a biscuit. They they go for the hard mobs and they level fast, but they also die a lot. And me, I sat in Kaladim killing rats and doing that quest, which I it was it was also a money quest, so that was kind of yeah. nice. But I mean, I'm doing the safe. Like I'm on the other extreme of just very very slowly proceeding. Um, I'm I'm doing blacksmithing, so I think once I get a set of armor, I'll take more risks. But uh, I'm definitely like trying to take the uh, tortoise route in this. Yeah, where I am the opposite. Uh, the reason uh, Grinham has his own poem now written about him is because he started in Kaladim. He went to uh, fill the bones. He's been to um, uh, North Row. Oasis, South Row, in the North Little Swamp, um, the Ferrot, Greater, uh, or um, Wraith Mountains, Wraith Lake, South Karana, North Karana, 
and uh, finally ended up dying due to lag. But still, I mean, he uh, he was an adventurer. And I make sure that on certain characters, I'm not going to hold back. I'm, I'm going to play them, um, try to get them to a point where I feel comfortable, and I'm going to play them as how I would feel that the class should be played. That said, um, this next character that I made is going to be on a completely different level. I'm, I'm going to take it safe. Uh, I'm going to preach the, uh, the, the followings and the teachings of Praxis. And um, the flood is coming, guys. The flood <laughs> is coming. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. So uh, shall we get on to awarding our... Absolutely. Love. So we had two winners this month. Um, one of us is uh, one of them is with us, Rindala, and the other is I'm going to say it incorrectly. I believe it's Wygar or Wydar. Help what, me out here. I say I say Wudyar. Uh, it's W U D Y A R. I like Congrats. Woodyar. Sounds about right. Congrats, Rindala and Woodyar, level 13, Thank current you. highest in the guild at the end of the month. Yep. Yay! Thank you so much. Yay! Congrats, congrats. It, it was hard work getting it back three days left. <laughs> <laughs> so, as prize, since there's a tie, we decided to give both of you the um, vial of swirling smoke, uh, which costs a thousand plat to get, and it's an instant cast gate, so hopefully... You can use it to survive. Uh, I know you get gate, but this is instant, so um, yeah, I will save that. That would be nice. Keep it, keep it, uh, keep it at the ready, but don't accidentally yeah. right-click it. <laughs> no, it's gonna be in a bag unless I decide to go into like a dungeon or something. Then it'll be yeah, ready that's, now. That is good for dungeoning. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, great. um. The uh, the next thing uh, we want to do is um, hand out other prizes. Yes, no. Or yeah, we stories? could hand out things to everyone. All right. Um, our, uh, our very uh, great leader here, Guild Anchor, has some stuff to pass out. I will give you some stuff to pass out as well. <laughs> Did I give it to you? Am I lagging? Hello. Is the world ending? <laughs> okay. You're there. It's just... <laughs> Lag. Alright, so... Um, since since you all came today, we wanted to go ahead and definitely give you something that uh, would be beneficial to your... Um, to going around in the world. And... Um, Hopefully you will use it wisely and enjoy it. Um, it is uh, the best we could do for not twinking you guys <laughs> or going against the uh, the rules. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Ooh, nice. I like it. Poom, it's nice. I feel like I'm back on red. <laughs> this will save my life someday. I feel it. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. I, sh I should have brought that SBS that I looted. I was going to give it to Grin, and he kind of doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> it's in the bank. Oh, well. So, yeah. At this point, I guess um, we can share some memories of our great, uh, glorious battles, and then those who have fallen in those battles. Gather around, my friends, as I tell you the story of Toter, who lived his life with valiant glory and died, well, to a lot of mobs. <laughs> I um, So, Toter, the very first one, was actually my favorite role. He was a, a dwarf rogue and i uh ended up 
going out into the fields, took it slowly, didn't touch the uh, goblins until level 2. At level 2, it started killing faster and faster, and I would pull all of the skeletons and all of the goblins. And um, one point, I had uh, almost died to a crag chick and didn't let myself go ahead and get back to full health. I was like, oh, you know what? I, I can do this. I'm going to go pull everything again. And uh, as I got probably halfway through the stack of mobs, uh, I noticed that my health was going down really fast. And I uh, tried to run for it and slid into home base of death. <laughs> Because that, that's that's the whole life to death ratio of, of that character, and any toter I've ever made. <laughs> Rest in peace, all the toters. Rest in peace. Poor toter. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few that have been uh, like power dyers. Yeah. I think another one is um, all the jum jums. Rest in peace, oh. all the jum jums. Oh, no, yeah. jum jums over. A yep. plinky. <laughs> all of the jum jums are now dead. Yeah, there was. How many were there? How many jum jums did you get through? I had nine jum jums and uh, decided that we didn't need a tenth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good run, all the jum jums. Yep. I think avenging all of the people who died to the rabbit grizzly was fun. That is definitely uh, a uh, noble quest. Yeah, absolutely. And someday we will have to rip apart Varsoon because that evil guy uh, took out many, many of our oh, tunes. Tons. It was the rabbit. Rest in peace, and... everyone. Everyone who died in Kinos Hills. <laughs> Indeed. It was. I think that's probably the zone with the most deaths, isn't it? I think so. On that rabid grizzly right. <laughs> I think yeah, um, when we get a group of when we get a group in the 30s, we're gonna have to do a raid on Varsoon. Oh yeah, definitely. I'll kill him. <laughs> kill him dead. <laughs> Working on it. Trust me. So I would think I have I have two particular deaths I would like to remember in this meeting. Um, one was I hate I hate to say it this way, but it's probably my favorite death. <laughs> <laughs> um, rest in peace, coat, for mending yourself to death, trying to heal yourself, but doing the opposite. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest in peace, indeed. Rest in peace. The other one is uh, Judith. Rest in peace. The many iterations of Judith, but the one where she ran into an orc camp and tried to escape, but then ran into another orc camp. I thought that was a very classic, wonderful, you know. Yep. <laughs> you got... I uh, that's a pretty... My wife has had some interesting experiences here. It was really, really, I just joined, and I was, like, the first person uh, to a small coyote. Like, not even, I don't know, I was just minding my own business, and out of nowhere, like, this random coyote just comes, and I try to run away, but I'm lost, and I'm running in circles, and it's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I got too attached to her, too. Rest in peace, Rosalie. Rest in peace. Rip. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> I just... This is Rindal. I still can't believe I died on that war warrior. Because I was going the distance, man. And just... <laughs> damn brownie got me in the back. I shouldn't have been off killing orcs. I was up. It was. I was early. I was getting ready to go walk the dog. And someone was camping the sisters. And I'm like... Okay, well, I'll just go peek at something else before I go walk the dog. And then I went and looked at an orc. And, okay, this is okay. It's green, but maybe I'll just go to Minnows. And I saw another orc. I'm like, okay. And I it felt like it was over in an instant. I looked at the log last night. And it was 14 seconds from the time the brownie spotted me till I died. And I didn't even realize it until like three seconds till I died. <laughs> 
It was just, Ouch. and I didn't have headphones on, otherwise I would have heard the first crunch, but it was casting, so it wouldn't have mattered. It would have just nuked myself down, so. Yep, they're, they're, you oh. wouldn't have been able to run. That, was, that camp is so far from the zone, too. I know, it was just, oh, so heartbreaking. I cried on my walk. I walked the dog and cried. Oh. Legit. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it was, it was tears, because that was so hard. I worked my butt off for a week on that character, not dying, being very careful, getting gear, getting weapons, getting everything, and then... But I, I said, you know, I got three days to go, I can get this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember you. Uh, you ended up uh, buying some uh, uh, items off of me uh, from the bronze yep. quest, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, keep going." And last time I saw you was um, you had the bronze breastplate, the arms, and I think the bracer, and then chain for the rest. So you were doing really good. Yep. Yeah, I had a mix of bronze, chain, and tattered. I had to balance the weight because I didn't have money to buy strength gear. But I mean. It yeah. worked out really well. It just, and I was dual wielding two good weapons. I had, I mean, oh, I was just, oh, it's okay though, because you know what, it, the this next month would have been uber rough as a warrior trying to solo in the off hours. Oh yeah, and um, it, no one was able to get up to your level at that point. If if you had at least some kind of healer, uh, you could have uh, probably gone a whole oh, lot yeah. further. Now though, I'm you know got a druid. We can get people. If we can get some people who are having trouble to fade, where we can get them moving along and show them a few things that are really good to get the lower levels out of the way. If we can get people to around the low teens, people will start being able to really survive. Yeah, and the really cool thing about the guild is that uh, we have um, we we have different things strats. We have a section for strats, uh, especially with specific mobs that have killed us in the past. Uh, also, we uh, we share the quests that we're doing. Um, I would have never known about the rat quest without a uh, memo or a living life. And um, I, I would have uh, probably never did the bread quest without having someone else help me with that and i found out uh just the other day that that bread quest isn't only between south corona and north corona but it's also t uh goes to all of the zones that are affected or towns that are affected by the uh the plague so it's uh it's really cool that we were helping each other get get uh get leveled up we're learning things we never learned and um it's it's really making everything uh even more fun that way So yeah, um, probably actually the most memorable death of all was when our fellow officer rode uh, lost Menween. Yeah. When he yeah. he as a wood elf was traveling to the dwarf city, <laughs> and this is this is a vod on his Twitch channel. So if you if anybody would like to see that, check check that out. Uh, it's in it's in our videos channel here. Um, and on the way, he was killed, struck down by a dwarf guard, no less, because he was worshiping Ralosek. The oh, the vod yeah. the of that is like one of the most intense deaths I've ever seen in EQ. It was just so, so crazy. Yeah. Such a good vod. I'd also like to give a shout out to all of the uh, our trolls. We, <laughs> oh uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of nice uh, attempts at Inethul, which is probably one of the more challenging starting areas. Yeah, we had um, Immortal. Uh, we had Immortal for one. Rest in peace, Immortal. Yeah, we really thought you were the immortal troll. Exactly. <laughs> you had a you you did an amazing attempt. I think um, he was the highest level troll, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was doing great. We had Gamok. Uh, who else do we have? Tanalol. We had a lot of great trolls. Tr uh, Trorlar. Trorlar. Im Immortroll? Yeah, Immortroll was amazing. Yeah, and, and um, the ogres that uh, uh, some of us ogres went and uh, grouped with him. I know Death Store got a chance to group with him before he ended up dying. And, um, yeah, so it, 
the whole ogre and troll situation is a very, very hard start. I feel the sure. trolls more because of the fact of the vastness of, of the uh, swamp, but both of them are equally as hard to start in. So oh, another shout out. Um, the first person to get to the teens actually was Tanalil, uh, one of our fellow officers. Uh, yeah. He got to 13 on his Ixar Necro. Yeah. Um, and fell in Kern's Tower. That yeah. was the, one of the early heartbreaks because he was really going far. Yeah, and he. Uh, it was only because I think he was AFK. Or something like that. He he didn't. It's not that he died to um, pulling or killing. It was that he died because uh, he, I think he was preoccupied and uh, had to do something. Then he ended up dying, and that was that's the worst way to die, especially with the character that you've worked so hard on. Right. I rarely AFK logged in unless I got a med, and then I like find the highest zone wall possible to sit on, and even then I like try to get near a zone where I'm and run AFK with the headset as high as I can so I can hear everything because <laughs> that would be the worst is I AFK. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, oh. I usually with my characters uh, that have um, hide, I always hide if I'm going to AFK or anything like that. It started snowing on us. It's... it's uh... Yeah. This is kind of fitting weather now. So <laughs> gloomy. <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody else have anything they want to share? Any stories? In that case, I just I had the most fun I've had playing EverQuest in 15 years doing this. So yeah, this is. Amazing. I don't think I've had this much fun since 2002. It's just that awesome. Yeah, it's so. so hard. Thank you guys for that. Absolutely. Uh, the hardest part is is not playing these tunes. The hardest part is uh, going back to your mains and feeling like, wow, this is so boring. <laughs> There's, I don't feel like I want to uh, die today just because of the fact that um, I'm, I'm not on my characters. I tend now to spend more time on these characters than I do my mains. Yep. Uh, Crinkles, our, our newest guildie, joined today. Uh, died a couple times um, in guild chat. <laughs> Crinkles has said, Crinkles the second, the male wood elf ranger, died to mysterious tree orc while trying to pry a weapon from the hands of a skeleton. Rest in peace, Crinkles the second. Hopefully, <laughs> Crinkles the third lives on for many, many seasons. Yeah, we've had, uh, I, th I think what is, is funny is that a lot of people, they say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a try, and then 10 deaths later, all right, I, I need to probably change my method or, or something along those lines. Because whenever you first start, you, you kind of are coming in, and you, you, you know what the, the idea is, but you don't know how hard it is until you, you actually die a few times. It's like, don't get attached to your first few characters because those will be the ones that will die um, from things you don't even know about until they actually happen. Yeah, it's like learning to ride a bike as a kid. Like, you re really don't get it until you get it, you know? Like, you you just get on the bike and fall nonstop until, until you just get on and start cruising, you know? And then you're like, okay, I got it. Yeah, and then you die anyways. But you know, at least you kind of get it at that point. Yeah, how to survive, you know. I think I focused way too much time on collecting bone chips on some of my characters than uh, actually trying to safely level. Bone chips are really good, man. That's what gets you the nine and ten. Yeah, I ended up getting a port to sell them and uh, got eaten by a griffin. Oh. I remember that's, that. Oh, that sucks. 
say that's one thing I've learned with this is the there's a balance between having money and using the things you're going to sell for experience because you got to experience is money as well because you think about your leveling is what you're trying to do so you got to like balance the what you want to sell your bone chips or use them for experience sell your belts or use them for experience you got to find a a line there of what's the right balance Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of interaction from the P99 community. Shout out to the whole P99 community. I know a lot of people uh, watch Cypher's videos, so um, everyone who's been interacting with us, you know, giving us um, encouragement, um, all of that, it's really, really awesome. Um, a lot of people have asked me, like, well, say you get to level 50 and you delete it, that seems like a lot of time lost, you know, like you just, almost like you wasted your time, but I think a lot of us in here kind of, you know, we, we go into the challenge knowing that yeah. our character will be gone, but it's about the journey, you know. And whenever um, you get to that point, you're spending a whole lot more time thinking about where you're going to go to level, uh, especially with cer uh, certain classes like uh, druids. They can quag kite at a certain point. Rangers can fear kite. Uh, you would probably pick locations that are best suited for you to be able to get away if uh, right. things go wrong. Uh, you, you're you're a whole lot more uh, oriented on how you want to make sure that you're you're not going to die, especially when you get to that point. I would feel. Yeah. So the way I look at it is like this character's life is a story. Unlike unlike my other characters where their story never ends, there's I mean I can I can kind of get burnt out on them because um it just never ends. There's 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 um there's always a continuation. And so someday I might be like, well, I just don't feel like playing this character. But with Living Life and my permadeath character, every single moment I'm on is writing more to the story because everywhere I go he has he's experiencing his life he's experiencing the world he's doing quests he's leveling and if and I know that if he dies that's it his story's over and I get to finish that chapter and and I don't I don't I don't feel like I've wasted time I feel like I've written a story you know yeah and it and it comes to a close and then I get a re-roll and start a new one so I don't feel like it's wasting time. I feel like it's more actually playing the game and more experiencing it than any other character I've ever had before. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I, I, the way I think about it is that the levels are your age as a character. And while we are, of course, um, young adults as our character's uh, looks... Uh, every level we we get is adding on to our lifespan, and in real life, uh, you die at some point. So uh, yeah, it's um, you you you're living one life, and when that life ends, it is going to be hard. But uh, you worked to get to that point, and it, it uh, shows the dedication that you had to to living that life. And uh, yeah, it's it really does make it a whole a whole different experience, and it makes you almost want to play more just because of the fact you you want to get to the point where you can get better gear. And one of the things that a lot of people have been doing is comparing us to other guilds that kind of do some of the things similar that we do, but the fact that we can use the open market allows us to be able to upgrade our equipment by either crafting or selling bone chips or um, looting different items and selling them and trying to get other items with those items. And it just really allows us to um, to be a little bit more open to our environment. Though you um, got to understand whenever you get in this guild, it is a very public guild. People know who we are. And sometimes, if you're a warrior or uh, or anything like that, they um, they may not want you to tank 
<laughs> because uh, of the fact that they know that if you die, you're dead, that kind of situation. Other people will check you. Um, I mean, I've had people contact me saying that they, uh, they uh, buffed some people and they did go ahead and get rid of the buffs. And it's, I mean, I'm not asking people to do that, but the community has gotten to the point where uh, they, they're getting to know us. And because of that, they're, they're not only uh, liking it, but they're, they're definitely coming back and, uh, and letting us know uh, what we're doing. So it's, it's pretty cool. And uh, we have two GMs. Well, one of them is actually a developer for um, Project 1999. And the other one is a GM, but they, they definitely approve of this guild. They really like it. That's awesome. I was trying to sell uh, the guild to some people in uh, Steam Front ye font yesterday. They were talking about one guy was looking for his corpse. And, hey, you know, you could join us. And you don't have to worry about looking for your corpse. <laughs> <laughs> no pesky corpse runs again, man. Uh, there's so many people. I, I mean, uh, being that uh, a lot of my characters that ha are um, my casual characters um, or the line of characters that I've had who are my casual and not recorded characters, people ask me things uh, about the guild and I've, I've actually had to explain the purpose of the guild and they are, I don't understand. Uh, well, then I guess the guild <laughs> isn't for you if you don't understand the concept of one life, one death. <laughs> it, it's It's... Not that hard, but uh, then there's others who really uh, think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I've had a few people that were like, you know, I really like all 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 that you're doing, but this whole thing where you can, you know, farm your own money and, and buy stuff in the market, like, the thing is, is that, they, you know, they're, they're, they, they feel like it would be more fun if if it was even more hardcore that you couldn't, you couldn't buy anything. You had to just go out in the world and get gear. But the thing is, is that that's almost impossible. I think mm -hmm. without being able to acquire some some gear to survive. I mean, I, I encourage those people to try the challenge just to see exactly how hard it is. Yeah. Um, getting yourself, you know, a better chest plate, maybe like an HP ring or this or that. You know, I mean. As starting as a level one character with nothing and not being able to get help from any other character, none of your other characters, um, it's very difficult. Yeah, I mean, you have to go out there. I mean, Toter himself knows. He went yeah. out and tried to farm bone chips, and that's how he got his demise in yeah. Butcher Block. I, it's not like you're risk free doing that. I mean, oh no, uh, especially even, when even you get strong in the economy is <laughs> is you know dangerous. I mean, Jum Jum was taking bone chips over to EC and got you know, killed by a griffin. I mean, so, but, but participating in the economy of the server allows you to get a little bit more survivability. Um, yeah. And not too much, though. I mean, you can't buy a fungi on a permadeath character. It's just impossible. Yeah. It would take tens of thousands of bone chips, you know? I mean, it's yeah. Just, it's and it'd take you months do. if you, if you, um, I mean, a necromancer, if they can't, if, if a necromancer or say my mage, because I'm going to be an evilish mage, um, once I get up to around 28 or so, I can kill treants and make tens of thousands of plat on that, on that, uh, kill line. But, uh, I mean, 10,000 is not enough to buy a fungi. That's enough to buy maybe some basic, decent gear for my character. And well, even if, but that's when I'm you're sorry, level ahead. 28. I mean, that's not when you're level 1 or level 10. That's Yeah, and we've had people... Our highest level to date has been 17. And that has been a monumental, amazing success, you know, achievement. To yeah. get to 28 to do that, I mean, you, you have earned the right to go farm some plat and buy yourself whatever you want, you know what I mean? Yeah, and to it's... To survive is... It's it's amazingly difficult, and it's not easy. I mean, if um, on my necromancer, I I did treants and I died five times doing it because of the fact that I ran out of mana during the fight, and early on, um, I didn't know that it was actually faster to kill them by using a direct damage spell instead of trying to fear kite them, because you can kill them in two shots with your direct damage spell. 
It's a poison spell that you get at like level 24. So um, knowing that now, it'd be easier for me as a mage, but still it's gonna it's gonna be uh it's not gonna be easy it's still gonna be wrought with peril and you have um you have the name trent uh who would be higher level i would guess uh, those things but still i you have to get to that level and that, that is really the challenge and even if you farm all this gear even if you get everything perfect you're you're still people we, we have people who get so much gear they still can just die yeah it doesn't matter exactly. you're still gonna die i mean it's just a matter of when it's gonna happen it's rng for gods sure. <laughs> rng gods for sure there's gonna be that moment where you fizzle the gate where you miss this where this happens where you lag where just something happens and you're done your fey death fails and what well, or yes. you're, uh you're being casted on and your fey death and you died to an ice comet i mean all kinds of things can happen it doesn't that's matter just the life of yeah i think that's the just only, the life of being an adventurer in norath i mean that's just how it is i think the only character that really has it a, a little bit on uh, a little bit more of an edge is a cleric because um you get your da but at higher levels um, you can have both DAs uh, put in uh, your your spell list, and you can use one. And as soon as the one drops, you can use your other DA. And I don't know if a lot of people actually know that, but that's how I run my cleric, and he's fifty three. But yeah, I I feel clerics are, have a little Cler bit of an edge, especially in this guild. They they do. They have the best hit point buffs. They have the best uh, get out of jail free cards. They got fears. They've got roots. They've got gates. Divine aura. Everything. Cleric's got a lot of tools. If you get to that point, you just got to get through the low levels to get there. Yeah, and mage is a really powerful one too. But you have to get to level four to even start to take advantage of of their quality. One and... challenge with a cleric though is that you don't have the solo ability eventually i mean you can solo some undead but it, it it's, yeah it's challenging it's fraught with peril as well uh, undead are not fun to fight um eventually i'm gonna have to take living life into some dungeons um i, I already went to crush bone i got my level 10 on crush bone um and that was pretty scary yeah um but some other classes can you know solo outdoors a little better um taking on uh single fights and so there's there's some i definitely think having that extra da is pretty amazing yeah and you you really need a tank or somebody in front of you so that you can um you can do what you do sorry one sec i'm being told that the person who's going to be joining us soon just died <laughs> no <laughs> Yeah, um, so I I think everyone has their, their own um, problems. One of the things that I was actually told is that, you know, for us to work together more, that they said that we should all be um, uh, red so that uh, we could only heal ourselves. I'm like, that's a little too far. <laughs> that's, I mean, if I get in a group... And I'm not with my guild. I can't be healed. I can't. I can't have buffs put on me. That is that's the a worst. bit insane. Yeah, I, I yeah, mean, I'm really, happy, I'm really happy if this is a character like anyone else on the server. You know, the yeah. same experience, except the peril is so much more real because you have to be careful. You have to not die, or it's done. It's deleted. You know. I mean, this is this is the same experience as everyone else on the server. It's just heightened, I feel, because your senses have to be sharper. You have to be really paying attention that much more. Everything is <laughs> that much more terrifying. Um, so he said that he uh, he died because uh, between Felwith and uh, Kelithan, um just uh, trying to get to um, to the pod lift. And uh, he uh, he died, and I said, "Welcome to the guild. Your initiation is over." <laughs> nice. So, um, uh, any uh, any other stories or anything else you guys want to bring up while we're here? 
Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all the guild members, everyone who has joined. Everyone has been super positive, super... Um, the engagement has been huge. We've grown so fast. Everyone, much love to all the guild mates. I mean, um, it's been amazing. I'm so happy that this is taking off and everyone is having so much fun. Absolutely. it's um, It's been a pleasure to uh, be in the company of so many good people and really, uh, really just enjoying it. Thanks to all the officers for always getting on and inviting everybody because that's a a lot of people and real fast that it's happening yeah uh, thanks <laughs> I'm, I'm i have a lot of fun inviting people like i mean i get to see they are very start you know so yeah absolutely that. and uh you get to get to travel and see how people are doing in those areas so it, it that's really uh really enjoyable and the fact that we have uh so many officers now that and we have so many characters in each location. All of us are able to invite people now, which is really, really making it a whole lot easier for you guys. Yeah, shout out to Road slash Tano. Yep. And uh, awesome. Tanolin, uh, Tano, Ten, Tanolil. Tanolil. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to go ahead and end it here, unless anyone else has anything. Um, thank you so much for watching, everyone. This has been Cypher Deck and the N No Time to Res crew. Peace out. Mm -hmm.